some explanation of why such an inadequate company was chosen to fix the state's broken bridges may lie in titanium management's registration information in the company's commission of Malaysia. It shows that out of 2.4 million shares in the company when it was founded, 1,430,000 were owned by Mahmoud Abu Bakir Taib, son of the chief minister. That more isn't made of such apparent conflicts of interest might strike outsiders as unusual. But the chief minister keeps a tight rein on the press in the state, while heavy restrictions are placed on outside media organizations, including bans on any filming or interviews about sensitive current issues, which will cause unrest or tarnish the image of Sarawak. Filming stories about logging, the environment, and local political issues. And any negative or critical portrayal of the good name of the government. The issue of the Taib family's money is so sensitive that even normally talkative analysts Al Jazeera spoke to refused to be interviewed. Such fear is perhaps not surprising. Threatening phone calls to activists fighting commercial interests for the rights of indigenous people are not uncommon. There's no suggestion the Chief Minister's family are in any way involved, but it's clear Sarawak's political atmosphere can be poisonous. The latest that I had, they said that, you know, in, in cities, uh, accidents do happen. And, you know, uh, they are bad drivers, they are bad roads, you know. Uh, they are heavy traffic and they are careless drivers. So what do you make out of it? I don't know. See? That, that is a very specific. So that was an anonymous phone call? Yeah, that is an anonymous phone call to me, uh, talking about road accidents. Meanwhile, the Penan villagers, forced to make way for the Bakun Dam, scratch a living on their small holdings. For them, development has meant a new longhouse but no forest to find food in. The dam will cost at least two billion US dollars. But the 10,000 people it's displaced say they only received half their promised compensation. And that itself is no recompense for a life gone in a state that seems to favor spending its money on a chosen few. Those people who are well off, they will get richer. For those of us who live from meal to meal, life is not easy. Among the 20 penitent families, none of us have any money left. For those who have money, they will live. For those of us without money, it is very difficult. Life before was much better. After the break, we'll speak to Sarawak's Land Development Minister, Dr. James Massing. Stay with us on 101 East. Welcome back to 101 East. Joining us now to speak about Sarawak's development, we are joined by the Minister for Land Development, Dr. James Massing. Thank you very much for speaking with us Thank today. You. There's been a lot of controversy over the environment fallout over the Bakun dams, which currently it has not been finished yet. And yet there are plans to build 12 more new dams. Are these extra dams necessary? For Sarawak, it is necessary. Sarawak do require clean, and cheap electricity that is renewable and for Sarawak it will not be it is only wise for us to utilize the rainfall that we have and the rivers that we have so them need to be built to provide the cheap renewable energy. There are experts though who say that Sarawak has enough energy and there is no need for 12 new dams. Sarawak has enough energy as it is today but we must look down the road 20 years down the road and by that time we may not have enough energy. You know very well the fossil fuel. Are you expecting the same sort of environmental fallout that we saw from the Bakun dams? I, I don't think there is such a thing as environmental fallout. I, I do not believe that is correct. 10,000 people displaced. That is not environmental fallout. That is Virgin natural. forests being cut down. Virgin forests, half of that area, half of that area has been felled for shelf by shelving cultivators. So basically, what is inundated? Basically, are felt forests, secondary forests. And what about the indigenous people that live there who've uh, lost their livelihoods, lost, lost their homes? Well, not quite lose their homes. They are resettled in, uh, into in new areas which 
has a trend toward modern development, and that's what we're trying to do. When they consult it, though, many of them they, are unhappy that they have been moved. They've had no say to uh, about this move, and they've, they've lost their traditional way of life. That is not quite correct, actually. I was one of the social scientists that did the survey prior to Bakutam, and I spent a few years with, with consultants from overseas try to work out, make sure that they are settled in areas which they have a say in it. And they have been consulted. In fact, the longhouses that are built in Bakut are, in fact, a joint venture effort between the government and the people who are resettled. And that is why they're still staying in longhouses with a difference. Well, what about the 12 new dams? What preparations that, yeah, okay, have we made that, for these that indigenous is a proposal. tribes? The proposal, the 12 new dam, is just a proposal for the next maybe 20, 25 years down the road. I think government, any responsible government, must be responsible for what happens in the future. You cannot assume that today we have enough, therefore no need to prepare for the future. If you do that, to me that is irresponsible government. That's understandable. That's the future that's the... You're talking about the economic future yes. of Sarawak. Yes. What about the future of these indigenous tribes? They are. We are looking into the future. That is why we are consulting them all the time. Mm -hmm. To accuse that we don't consult them is wrong. I can how, tell you. How, how much is the construction of these new dams linked to boosting the family business for the chief minister's family? I don't think, I don't think there is. Well, the, the family business is Chahaya Mata uh, Sarawa, Chahaya Mata Sarawa, CMS, and mm. they will be providing the construction materials for these dams. Not for the next 12 dams. Not for the next 12 Well, oh, where no, will no. the... Is CMS any, in any way linked to the dams? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. The, the dam construction are done through legal tenders, and the lowest tender gets it. It doesn't matter whether it's CMS or somebody else. It must be done on tender basis. Right. And that, that is very transparent, I think. International community can have a look at that. Okay. But these, these dams have nothing to do with the Chief Minister at all? No. It, whatever is done, is done on very transparent methods mm -hmm. of tendering process. Mm -hmm. And that can, it's an open book for everybody to have a look. And so you're saying CMS will not be providing the building materials for these dams? If they are qualified, and they're found, if they're found by the, the tender community to be qualified, why not? And it is open up, it's an open tender process. The best will get it. There has been, though, in the history of Sarawak, uh, in, in the 30 year of the Chief Minister's history with Sarawak, uh, there have been cases where there has not been open tender, and this is flouting state I, legislation. I'm not aware of it. Well, uh, right, I'll tell you, well, there's no open, there was no open tender for the aluminum smelting project with Rio Tinto. That was given to CMS, family-owned business, by the chief minister, the chief, chief minister's family-owned business. There was no open tender for the 2000 state contract to repair or build bridges, and that was awarded to titanium management, of which the chief minister's son is a major shareholder. Now, both these cases, these are two cases that we've been able to come up with. There are others that people have told us about. Both these cases flout state legislation. Is it fair to say then that what state contracts are given to CMS and the chief minister's family business? What we must understand that we do have rules and laws regarding people to decide. If a decision is made by people with vested interest, there are laws that will not allow it. It is illegal, you know also very well, it is illegal for people who have the authority to give that authority with vested interest. It is illegally done. You cannot do it because there is no illegality in it. I would assume there is none. That all these things are done through tender process, which are transparent. But these cases haven't been no, given they open are, tender. No, they, they are. They are bidding The Rio Tinto it. case as well they as the bidding, titanium but they, they have a few companies that has been, that has been asked to bid for it. I know. Mm -hmm and the best companies get it. And fortunately, unfortunately, given to a company in which the authority has some interest. But it is done legally. That is important.